Welcome back, viewers, to The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio, That Is I, where no God is required for a life of love, joy, peace, fulfillment, meaning, and purpose in life. And the good life is one guided by reason and motivated by love. Uh, today, I'm going to go ahead and continue with the topic of my um, death of my brother, my big brother. Um, and I want to discuss how we atheists cope with grief and loss of a loved one. Um, I went over this last episode um, about my brother's funeral uh, and how I was uh, so graciously asked and allowed to speak at a very Christian funeral, my big brother's funeral, uh, in spite of my strong atheism and humanism and how the Christians were very kind to me um, and how I was had this rekindling and love and passion for humanity. Um, but that does not have lessened my atheism at all. Uh, I would continue what I've been doing, just loving people, which we all should do, humans, uh, loving humans. Um, many Christians, since the death of my brother on April the 6th, uh, my Christian clients, Christian friends, and other people on, on Facebook, other people I run into, um, asked me the question, and one of my clients, who's a very, very strong Christian, asked me uh, when I got back from uh, the New Orleans area uh, from my brother's funeral uh, last week. She said, David, I've got to ask you a question, and I hope I don't offend you. And I said, oh, of course not. <laughs> That's my job. I love for Christians to ask me questions. Ask me anything. I want you to ask so I can give you answers. Because most of you do not understand what I try to teach. You do not understand how to be good and moral and happy and how we cope with pain and loss as an atheist. It's surprising to me how pervasive it is and how common it is in the Christian community the lack of understanding of atheism and humanism and that we are just like you. We're people. We're humans. I'm not going to sneak in your house and steal your baby and fry him up and eat him. We don't do that. We're people just like you. So my client asked me the other night, she said, David, I grieve for you. My heart goes out to you because you don't believe in immortality. How do you cope with this pain of the loss of your dear big brother who was so close to you for so many years? Well, I said, very good question. And anytime Christ, uh, Christians ask me a question, I love it. Please ask me. <laughs> I'm here to help you to understand there is a wonderful life outside of God belief. That's why I do this. I'm helping you. Um, so I said, good question, and I have a good answer for you. And I, as I begin to explain the coping mechanisms internally that all humans have to cope with pain and sorrow and suffering, I do not have the same coping mechanism as you who believe in a God do. I and others like me depend upon this eternal, innate coping mechanisms that we have as human beings. Number one, weeping, crying. It's the way our body releases the pain. It's the way our body releases this internal stress. And we all know that too much internal stress, stress is not good for the human body. We need some external stresses. That's why I'm a personal trainer. I think we need some external stress on the muscles and the heart to keep us healthy, right? Too much stress is not good. So weeping and crying, which I've done a lot the last week or two, is a way to release and to cope with pain of loss. And another coping mechanism we use as atheists, and believe it or not, you Christians use the same coping me mechanisms, but you are just giving credit to a God. Um, talking to others. I want to thank my clients and my friends who have to listen to me talk about my brother and all the wonderful stories um, and of my big brother and all the jokes he told and he was a great storyteller and a great joke teller how he would laugh at his own jokes even though I the little brother never understood his jokes I try to laugh with him he was a great guy so I've had to talk a lot 
That's, way, that's one way of coping with pain and loss. Um, another way I've been coping with the pain and the grief of losing my big brother, I write music, I come up with songs. I used to do it as a young Christian preacher years ago. I'm a piano player, so I've already written a song about my brother entitled, My Big Bro. He would call me, hey little bro, and I called him Big Bro, something we've done for decades and decades. Um, so this is a way of allowing me, a coping mechanism for me to deal with this pain and this loss. And I think probably the most important thing that we do as atheists and all people do is being around other human beings. Uh, as a humanist, uh, it's all about the community. It's about loving people. Uh, as a social gregarious species, we are dependent upon one another. Having loving, caring friends, clients, family, and my loving girlfriend, Christine, there for me has been wonderful help for me to cope with pain. As an atheist, I do not use the coping mechanism that Christians use. And, I was a, and as I was at the funeral last week, a week ago today, I spoke at my brother's funeral, giving a humanistic worldview of honoring a human being, not honoring a God, honoring my brother and his wonderful life and how he was so generous, caring and giving. He was the type of guy that would help you without asking for any favors in, turn, in, in return. He was a person who cared about other people. He liked to make people laugh and smile. He was a very helpful person. But as I think about him and how other Christians and people and Christians have thought about my brother, the way the Christian message is and how you believers in the supernatural cope with this loss is different. You cope with the belief of immortality. You deal with this pain and loss by actually believing that you will see my big brother again. My parents, who I love dearly, are retired pastors and preachers. I've said this before many times. We have butted heads on the God thing for years. We've given it up. We can't change each other, so we just love each other. That's what family people, family members do. But my mother, 85-year-old sweet, loving mother, just picture a little 85-year-old Italian woman, sweet and loving as she can be, and that's my mother. <laughs> she said on the phone, she says, honey, sweetie, she said, I know that I will see Mark again in heaven. I know for sure, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that I will see him again. And I understand, this is her coping mechanism. This is how you that believe in gods and supernaturalism and immortality. This is how you cope with the pain and loss. Now, the question is, is it easier for you who believe in heaven? Is it easier for you than for me? I, as the lone atheist in my family, I, as probably the only atheist at that funeral of 200 people plus, Maybe a few closet atheists there. I'm sure there's always a few everywhere. I would say, very possibly, that it may be harder for me to cope with this. Christianity and all religions cope with the pain by believing that they will reunite with their loved one once again. I know. I have no reason to believe that I will see my big brother again. I cope with the hard, cold facts of reality. Life can be harsh at times. And I do preach and talk about the goodness of life without God. How to help other people. Yes. How to be uh, involved in philanthropic work which Christians do and we humanist atheists do alike. But in spite of the goodness of life, in spite of helping others, nature and life can be very cruel. Tooth and claw, as we've read in books of science and evolution. I love nature. Uh, my girlfriend and I go hiking. We go camping. I've done this for years. 
I love to go out and observe the beauty of nature. But at the same time, when I'm watching different species of birds or mammalian and reptilian species and local indigenous flora and fauna and the beauty of the natural world as a naturalist, I also know that life could be harsh at times as well. I remember not long ago taking a hike and watching an indigenous tree squirrel, a fox squirrel, we call them in this part of the country, coming down a tree with a baby white-winged dove in its mouth and watching the mother white-winged dove doing all she could to rescue her child, her progeny, the baby bird. And I used to think, oh, squirrels are pure herbivores. They're benign, they're harmless, so they're so cute, they're so beautiful. And as I watched this fox squirrel holding a live baby white-winged dove in its mouth, in its claws, turning it and eating this baby bird alive, life, nature, tooth and claw, it can be harsh and brutal at times. Another time I saw the same thing. Many times, in fact, I've seen this happen. I remember not long ago watching a grackle, a bird, species of bird, attack what I thought was a cicada, an insect in midair. It wasn't an insect. It was a young sparrow just leaving its nest in the early spring in March or April. And I thought for sure it was a cicada. It was a, a grackle attacking another species of bird, a sparrow. I saw the grackle knock this baby sparrow down to the ground. And again, before that, you think, oh, the beauty of nature, beauty of life. It's so beautiful and wonderful, which it can be. But it can also hurt. It can also be painful and harsh at times. And I watched that grackle. I wanted to save that little baby sparrow's life. It was too late. The grackle had it under its claw, pecked it to death, and began to eat it. Well, life can be cruel. Life can hurt, but there are coping mechanisms we have as human beings. The religious people, and those of you that view, and as I watched all the Christians at my brother's funeral last Saturday, I listened to the two preachers who spoke, one before me when I spoke, and one after me, and my sister-in-law, who is still family to me, who I care deeply for, and my niece. As I listened to their message, it was different than mine. It was analogous as far as my wonderful brother's life and how he reached people around him. But then they began to talk about immortality. And as I sat there, without getting angry, I wanted to get mad and angry and say, hey, you are dishonoring and devaluing my brother's life as a wonderful human being by talking about Jesus and God in heaven. Could I have gotten angry? Yes. But I chose not to because as I saw the pain in their eyes and my sister-in-law, her love for my brother, all those years of marriage, she was a wonderful wife to my brother and a wonderful mother to her daughter and my brother's daughter, my niece. But as I saw the pain in her eyes and the pain in these two close friends of my brother, these two preachers and all their close friends and other family members, I realized this is a coping mechanism for religious people. And I will go on saying that it might work. <laughs> that I'm not conceding in saying that there's a heaven now. Oh, no. It's a drug. It's a method that you use to numb the pain. As my dear sweet mother said, Honey, I will see Mark again in heaven. Could I have debunked and refuted that and argued with her and told her there's no evidence? Of course I could have not the place or time. This mechanism that my mother and my sister-in-law and those preachers and most people in that church, they, what they used to get through this painful time was thinking, he's with Jesus, he's with God. I'm an atheist. <laughs> no reason for me to believe that. I have to face the cold hard facts. We atheists have to face reality, and we do. I've made a choice to believe in reality. I've been there and done that with Christianity. I've preached for years to thousands of people before. I be used to believe that. 
And as I've said before in my previous episode, I made the choice 25 years ago to leave Christianity. And I can say I am 100% God free. It's a wonderful feeling. It's a beautiful feeling to know that reality is here and to try to help others to understand these concepts. So the grieving process that we all go through when we lose a family member, it's analogous. It's the same for all of us. But for Christians, you use the painkiller. <laughs> you use the belief system, or I could say a drug, the opium of the masses. You can use that to help you get through. I don't have that. And as I have answered Christians all week, and I will speak about this for years to come, we do have coping mechanisms as humans. And I am very thankful to have friends and loved ones, family members, all human beings. Again, we are a homogeneous species. We all bleed. We all cry. We all experience highs in life. We all experience pain as well. It's how you cope with it. So to educate you that are religious, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Jews, we atheists are just like you. We have feelings. We're not like Dr. Spock back in the old Star Trek series. Pure logic. Oh, no. We have emotions, too. We cry. We bleed. We just cope with it different than you. Is it more challenging than your coping mechanism? Maybe. It might be. Because I know I'll never see my brother again. That is a message that I want everybody to understand. For you atheists, my fellow atheists, and for my dear Christian and religious friends out there, that there are coping mechanisms we have in humanity to love each other, to encourage one another, and to get over the pain and the suffering. But life can be good. Life can go on with or without God. For you Christians out there, you're using your coping mechanism. For me and other atheists, we use our coping mechanisms. And you know, I want to make sure and give special thanks again to Facebook friends, to local friends, to all my Christian and atheist friends and all other religious people for your nice, kind notes and your encouragement to me. Uh, I want to thank all my family members, and again, who continue to love me in spite of my strong atheism, which proves they're wonderful people. We disagree. They believe in God, and I don't. And I will continue to speak <laughs> and continue to help Christians and other religious people and educate you that you don't need a God to be good and to let go of God belief because I think it makes the world better. I'm not going to change. But through this ordeal, through this hard time of my life, this has reinforced my love and passion for humanity. I want to thank my parents, my family members, my children, and of course my wonderful girlfriend Christine for the love, encouragement, and support. So thanks again for watching The Preaching Humanist with David Oliverio. Remember, no God is required for a life of love, joy, peace, fulfillment, meaning, and purpose of life. And the good life is one guided by reason and motivated by love. And one more time, as a preacher, I just don't know when to stop, do I? We have coping mechanisms within us to help us get through hard times. Just love each other. Love your family, especially, even if you're atheists or Christians. Stay connected. Help each other out. Have a wonderful